Hi, welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. This is Dr. O'Connor, and today we're going to talk about polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are composed of more than one atom. And here we have a table of polyatomic ions. Notice that they are all charged. In fact, most of the polyatomic ions on this table are negatively charged, with the exception of the ammonium ion and the hydronium ion. Now, we treat the polyatomic ions in the same respect as the simpler monatomic ions when we're writing formulas for ionic compounds. So polyatomic ions do combine with metals to form ionic compounds. So you're going to have to, again, memorize each one of these on this table, including the charges of each polyatomic ion. That's going to be very important. From these polyatomic ions here, we're going to be able to derive the other polyatomic ions and also name acids. So it's very important that you memorize these. Again, you memorize the name, the formula, and the charge associated with each one of these. Now, let's take a look at this over here. Here I have the formula for sodium nitrate. Remember, sodium forms sodium ions with a plus one charge. And the nitrate, and we find it right here on the table here, has a negative charge. So when we combine a positive charge with a negative charge, this is the formula. We have one sodium, one nitrate. So we have one sodium ion balancing one nitrate ion. So this would be the formula for that. Now, I just want you to note here that acetate ion can also be written like this. Um, it doesn't matter because there are still two carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens, and a negative one charge. Now, we're going to go over some rules for oxoanions. Recall that a polyatomic ion stays together as a charged unit. So, let's take a look at the formula for potassium nitrate. And this is definitely an ionic compound. It's composed of a metal and a polyatomic ion, which is negatively charged. So each potassium ion balances one nitrate ion. Remember, potassium is in group 1A, and potassium atoms form potassium ions with a plus one charge. So this would be the correct way to write the formula. We write the formulas just like we did before, except this time we're using polyatomic ions. And again, the polyatomic ion stays together as a charged unit. The formula for sodium sulfate is this. We have two sodium ions balancing one sulfate ion. Remember, the sulfate ion has a negative two charge. Sodium ion has a plus one charge. So we're going to need two sodium ions for each sulfate ion. If two or more of the same polyatomic ion are present in the formula, the polyatomic ion is enclosed in parentheses with a subscript written outside. So the formula for magnesium nitrate looks like this. We have magnesium atoms, and that's group 2A, and they lose electrons to form magnesium ions with a plus 2 charge. So each, in this case here, the nitrate ion has a negative one charge, so we're going to need two of these for each magnesium ion. So this would be the correct way to write the formula. What we do is, because there are two nitrate units, we put parentheses around the nitrate, and then this two here indicates the number of nitrate units. The formula for iron 3 hydroxide is here. Recall the Roman numeral 3 corresponds to the charge on the ion. So we have an iron plus 3. Hydroxide ion is a negative 1. So when we put these together, we need 3 hydroxide ions for each iron 3 ion. So again, I enclose the hydroxide in parentheses and I put the 3 outside of the parentheses. That indicates that we have 3 hydroxide ions for each iron 3 ion.
Now, let's get back to the oxoanions. And these oxoanions are negatively charged polyatomic ions, which can contain a metal or a nonmetal atom combined with one or more oxygen atoms. So let's look at rule number one. We're going to have four simple rules that we need to follow here. We are going to be deriving other polyatomic ions and acids from that list of polyatomic ions in the table. So rule number one states, with the addition of a hydrogen ion, the word hydrogen is inserted into the name of the polyatomic ion. When a hydrogen is added to a carbonate ion, here we get hydrogen carbonate ion. And I just noticed my arrow is covering the negative charge here. But the addition of the hydrogen reduces the negative charge from a negative 2 to a negative 1. Again, the negative sign is hidden behind the arrow here. So what we have is hydrogen carbonate ion. Now, the hydrogen carbonate ion has a net charge of a negative 1, and it can actually accept one more hydrogen ion. If the hydrogen carbonate ion accepts another hydrogen ion, then again, the net charge is going to be reduced by 1. Well, the negative 1, if we reduce that by 1, we're going to have a charge of 0. And in this case, once we have an uncharged species, after adding hydrogens, what we have is an acid. And we call this carbonic acid. Rule number 2, as the acid, the 8 ending is dropped. So this was carbonate, hydrogen carbonate, right? So we drop the hydrogen and we drop the 8. And then we put in IC ending with the word acid. So we drop the hydrogen and we drop the 8 and the carbonate, replace it with an IC, and we have carbonic acid. Let's see another example here. Here we have the iodate ion. And if hydrogen is added to the iodate ion, what we have is iodic acid. We drop the 8, add an IC, and the word acid, iodic acid. Notice when the hydrogen was added, the charge was reduced by 1. Now we have an uncharged species, so this is the acid. Again, iodic acid. Rule number 3, if the polyatomic ion retains a net charge after the second hydrogen is added, we use the term dihydrogen. Here we have arsenate ion. And when we add a hydrogen to the arsenate ion, the charge is reduced by 1. So we have a negative 2. And this is called hydrogen arsenate ion. Now, this hydrogen arsenate ion can also accept a hydrogen. And when it does, the charge is reduced by 1. And we end up with a dihydrogen arsenate ion. Finally, the dihydrogen arsenate ion can also accept a hydrogen. And when it accepts the hydrogen, the charge is reduced by 1, which is a zero charge. And now we have the acid. So the name of the acid then, again, we have the arsenate here. Replace the ATE with IC and the word ion with acid. Here we have arsenic acid. Rule number four. When an oxoanion contains one less oxygen but retains the charge of its parent polyatomic ion, the 8 ending is changed to ITE. The rules for the addition of hydrogen apply, but the acid will have an OUS ending in place of the IC ending. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we have nitrate ion. And if we add a hydrogen to the nitrate ion, we end up with nitric acid. That's nitric acid. Now, look at this. This is a nitrite ion. It has the same charge as the nitrate ion, but it has one less oxygen. So the 8 becomes an ite. This is the nitrite ion. So if a hydrogen is added to the nitrite ion, again, the charge is reduced by 1. So this would be nitrous acid. So see, the difference between nitric acid and nitrous acid is just one oxygen. Let's take a look at the sulfate ion. Again, this is one you should have memorized from the table. And the sulfate ion, when we add a hydrogen to it, becomes the hydrogen sulfate ion. 
And then this is still charged, so it can accept another hydrogen to become sulfuric acid. Now, let's take a look at the sulfite ion. It has the same charge as the sulfate ion, but one less oxygen. So that makes it a sulfite ion, and one less oxygen. And if it accepts a hydrogen ion, it becomes a hydrogen sulfite ion. And then if it accepts another hydrogen to become the acid, it becomes sulfurous acid. Notice the difference between sulfuric and sulfurous acid, one oxygen. Let's look at some additional forms of oxoanions. Oxoanions that contain a halogen have two additional forms. The chlorate ion you should have memorized from the table. And we see that the chlorite ion has one less oxygen. But, again, it can have two additional forms. Look what happens. If one oxygen is added, we end up with the per-chlorate ion. If we take the chlorite ion and subtract one oxygen atom, we end up with the hypochlorite ion. So the perchlorate ion has four oxygens. The hypochlorite ion has one oxygen. So these oxoanions with chlorine have four forms, chlorate, chlorite, perchlorate, and hypochlorite. These four states apply not only to chlorine, but also to bromine, and to iodine. Fluorine cannot form oxoanions. So an example, we know that the iodate ion has three oxygens, and one with four oxygens is going to be the per iodate ion. Look at the bromate ion from the table. The bromate ion in the table has three oxygens but this one only has one oxygen, so it is the hypobromate ion.